We begin this news hour in the Egyptian city of Sharm el Sheikh, where the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has issued a stark warning about climate change. Speaking at the COP27 climate summit, he warned that the world is on a highway to climate hell. He told delegates from 200 countries that climate change is the defining issue of our age. In the midst of a barrage of international crises, from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which has sparked a global energy crisis, to worsening droughts and floods, which is being blamed on rising temperatures, Mr. Guterres said the international community faces a stark choice, cooperate or perish. And the clock is ticking. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. The two largest economies, the United States and China, have a particular responsibility to join efforts to make this pact a reality. And this is our only hope of meeting our climate goals. Humanity has a choice, cooperate or perish. It is either a climate solidarity pact or a collective suicide pact. Well, China's leader, Xi Jinping, is a notable absence at the Sharm El Sheikh summit. His country is the world's top emitter of greenhouse gases, and President Macron of France is urging China and the United States to pay their fair share in helping poorer countries manage climate change impacts. We need the United States and China to really be on board. If I were to simplify things on emissions, our battle is for the richest to be present, to pay their fair share, and on this point, let's be clear, I need us to say things, the Europeans pay, but we are the only ones to pay. We also need to put pressure on the rich non-European countries to say you have to pay your share. Well, our eyes environmental correspondent Leila Johnson Salami has been monitoring developments and she joins me now from our Lagos studios. Uh, good to see you, uh, Leila. So, the, the latest climate summit uh, underway in Egypt after a year of climate related disasters, broken temperature records, and against that backdrop, I imagine a sense of anticipation but also trepidation uh, at that summit in terms of the size of the task ahead. Certainly, Charles, good evening. You know, a bit of both, um, I must say, because we've seen a number of extraordinary weather patterns and climate disasters around the globe this year. Like you said, hottest days on record. We've also seen floods, a situation we've been reporting on here at Arise News ourselves in Nigeria. And there's been a lot going on with regards to the intensifying effects of climate change. Um, at the same time, a trepidation, um, of course, as well, because several commitments have been made over the years that haven't been fulfilled. And with the world now set to cross the 8 billion population mark next week, um, one can only imagine how crucial implementing commitments to the Paris Agreement now is, um, which is why implementation is right at the forefront of all discussions at COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh over the next two weeks. Well, absolutely. And that figure of a growing population is absolutely scary. And the reality, of course, the world over uh, the, the last year in terms of the war in Ukraine, the multiple crises of food prices, energy costs and so on, countries are turning back to coal and other fossil fuels to keep the lights on. I mean, how much has all that taken the attention of world leaders away from climate change? Well, it's not good news for climate action, and certainly we've seen distractions this year. Um, it's not to say that last year at COP26, the world was approaching that summit on the backdrop of, you know, great politics, etc. But this year, a lot has happened, including Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which of course has triggered a food and energy crisis. And what we've seen is that there are several countries who don't necessarily have climate change at the top of their political agendas anymore. We've also seen countries resorting to using 
using more fossil fuels. Um, for example, one example is Germany. We've seen a rise in uh, electricity production from coal in Germany as gas supplies go down. So all of these issues are certainly distracting um, from the climate agenda and what needs to be done to reduce the intensifying effects of climate change. But I must also say, Charles, that beyond Europe, the US-China Climate Accord as well that was launched at COP26 has also been undone following Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. So there are lots, there's lots going on um, with regards to geopolitics that certainly are shaping um, the way COP27 is approached this year and will have an effect on decisions that are reached at the summit. Well, absolutely. And in terms of temperature targets, uh, Leila, there was a time when everybody had a target of 1.5 degrees. Temperatures were not to be allowed to rise above 1.5 degrees. Is that still even on the table? That is a good question, Charles. I mean, it's still on the table, but just yesterday, the World Meteorological Agency, or organization rather, in a report stated that the target is barely within reach based on current climate policies. And current climate policies, according to the United Nations, currently support a 2.8 degrees temperature rise. Um, so you can see 1.5 degrees to 2.8 degrees. We are far from there. Do we still need to work on achieving 1.5? Absolutely. That's why implementation of the Paris Agreement is at the forefront of, discuss um, of discussions at COP27 this year, like I said, because 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels is stated in the Paris Agreement. So pushing on that and ensuring that countries come forward with nationally determined contributions that support this goal is something that leaders will certainly be looking out for. Leila, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Leila Johnson Salami is a RISE environmental uh, correspondent as she was talking to me there about that uh, uh, climate summit that's just opened in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt.